Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Hello everyone and welcome to YouTube channel again. And today's topic is about how to read an orthopedic radiograph easily. Um, so as an introduction as in the previous uh, videos, uh, the x-rays are the radiations whereas the images that we see are the radiographs and we have four main tissue densities with bone being the densiest and it appears as radio opaque which is white and gas is radio lucent which appears black. And remember that x-rays are just a modality of investigation, so it's always important to take into consideration the clinical presentation of the patient. So this is the general outline that we'll be, t be uh, looking at, starting with the patient details. Uh, patient detail is very important in every radiograph we see, starting with the full name, the age or the date of birth, the gender, the hospital number, and the date and the time taken um, of the radiograph. And then we look at the projection. In general, we should always take at least two projections in orthopedic x-rays and usually they are AP projection and lateral projection and we can take additional views as needed. Now after checking for the patient details and the projection, then we check for the technical quality of the radiograph. And that's by first looking at the image field and what we look at is the total area of concern included in the image or not. And then we look at the rotation and ideally there should be no rotation and finally we look at the penetration and to assess for that we look whether the bone the soft tissues can be easily uh, differentiated or not and then we look at any obvious abnormalities in the radiograph and basically the most important obvious abnormalities are first the fractures and the second thing is the subluxations or dislocations and finally any obvious bony lesions. Now when we, when we see a fracture it's very important to have certain descriptive terms for it and those are the main descriptive terms that we have for fractures. With first describing what is the bone involved on the side. For example is it the left humerus or the right femur etc. The second thing is the part of the bone that is involved. So it is the distal thirds, is it the mid shaft, is it the distal one third, etc. And then we'll look at the pattern of the fracture. And this is usually seen clinically, not on the radiographs. And that's basically by seeing the skin overlying, whether it is intact or not. And then looking at the type of the fracture, we have transverse, oblique, spiral, green stake, and vertical. And then we assess for any displacement which could be anterior, posterior, medial, or lateral, and then by looking at the angulation of the fracture, and thus by assessing the movement of the distal fragment relative to the proximal bone in degrees. And that's different from displacement, and we'll see later on how this looks like on the radiograph. And finally, we'll look for any rotation or shortening of the distal fragment. So this is just a quick summary for describing the obvious abnormalities which could be seen on the radiograph. So this is a fracture of the left humerus with a fracture being in the mid shaft and this is an oblique fracture and the distal fragment is laterally displaced with a valgus angulation and internal rotation and even shortening of the bone. And here we can see clearly what this means. So you can see the displacement laterally. You can see the angulation to the outside so therefore it's called valgus angulation and this is the rotation and this is the shortening overall because the distal fragment is pulled proximally. Great, so now moving to the systematic review of the radiograph and what we look for in general is the following. First we assess the cortex for smoothness and for any thinning as thinning can be seen in osteopenia and then we look at the medulla looking for the density and the texture which could be affected in various bony lesions and then we look at the joint for any degenerative changes as in osteoarthritis and we look for any inflammatory changes as in rheumatoid arthritis and finally we look for any subluxation or dislocations and at the end we have a look at the soft tissues for any swelling and for any joint infusion both of which could indicate inflammation or bleeding here we have a good example of osteoarthritis of the right hip and we can first see that there is no there is loss of the joint space there is subchondral sclerosis which is increased opacities there are subchondral cysts which are the lucencies as we can see here and here we have an example of osteopenia as we can see the thinning of the cortex of the long bones and we can see slight increased lucency 
of the medulla of the lung bones as well. And at the end, we should always summarize our findings that we see on the radiograph. So this is a quick outline on how to read an orthopedic radiograph. And according to the radiograph that you see, that you'll probably need more details depending on the bone or the joint that you're assessing. And always remember to include the clinical picture of the patient with the radiographs that you see. Thank you very much for watching this video and I highly recommend this book which has a lot of cases and an easy way of approaching radiographs. Thank you again and I'll see you on the next video on an example on reading an orthopedic radiograph.